Hello and welcome to our family service. It's the start of New Year. I'm sitting up here in stairs listening to the fireworks. Did you get a chance to see any? Our celebrations for this New Year are certainly different to ones that we would ever expected. Maybe it's been quiet. Maybe it's been a little bit miserable and a bit lonely. New Year is a bit of a strange time and especially this year. Now I know you're all wondering why I'm wearing this collar. Well, New Year is a time for looking back and a time for looking forward. Back and forward. So I've got a bit of a stiff neck. Looking back, oh, not a very easy year. And then looking forward, will it be any better or not? Looking back, looking forward. It's a strange time of year. Have you made any New Year resolutions? I have. I've made a New Year resolution not to make any New Year resolutions. Because New Year resolutions are something that goes in one year and comes out the other. Looking forwards, looking backwards. I've got a stiff neck from doing that. It's making me feel quite dizzy. So this way I don't look back and I don't look forward. All I can do is look straight ahead. I wonder how Katie and her friends are finding out what it's like with the start of the new year. Let's go over and meet Katie and her friends and hear what they've got to tell us. See you later! Made me really dizzy. Forward, back, forward, back. I know, me too. I might have missed one. Who won it? The Scottish man. Oh, Andy Pudding. Murray. I think I'm hungry. Talking about food. Happy New Year! New Year! Everyone, Happy New Year! What's your New Year resolution, Gloria? Great. Question. Question! I've decided to stop looking back. Huh? What do you mean by that? Stop looking for the tennis ball! No, silly sausage. I mean to stop looking back and focusing on the past and look towards the future. There's so much to look forward to. Yes, like my mince pie I'm going to eat later. I thought you'd given up. Maybe I'll try again later. You're silly! <laughs> Mum and Dad will definitely understand me. Let's stop talking and pray. Dear Lord Jesus, please help us focus on the present and the future and not to worry about what's already happened and focus on today and tomorrow. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our family and friends and everyone. Amen. Amen. Great prayer. Bye, Bye. everyone.
Welcome back. I'm mighty glad to have got rid of that neck brace. It's really uncomfortable. If I'm honest, I don't find New Year very easy. It makes me feel unsettled. And certainly this year, I'm missing close family and friends. But this year, I'm trying to stop looking back and looking forward. This year, I really am trying to look straight ahead and there are two things that are helping me and I'd like to share them both with you. The first thing that's helping me is a poem. The poem is called God Knows and it's written by a lady called Minnie Louise Haskins. She was an amazing Christian lady and the poem is well worth reading as well as the story of her remarkable life, her ministry, and the way that she had to adapt to difficult changes in her life. She showed a tremendous amount of courage and faith, a willingness to adapt and to serve others. The opening words of the, her poem were made famous when King George VI read the introduction to this poem in his Christmas 1939 BBC radio broadcast to the British Empire. I'm sure that probably, certainly over the age of 30, will have heard of this poem, and it's going to be read to us now. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than a light and safer than a known way. So I went forth and finding the hand of God trod gladly into the night. He led me towards the hills and the breaking of the day in the lone east. So heart be still. What need our human life to know if God hath comprehension? In all the dizzy strife of things both high and low. God hideth his intention. God knows. His will is best. The stretch of years which wind ahead, so dim to our imperfect vision, are clear to God. Our fears are premature. In him all time hath full provision. Then rest, until God moves to lift the veil from our impatient eyes, when, as the sweeter features of life's stern face we hail. Fair beyond all surmise, God's thought around his creatures our minds shall fill. Our greatest gift at Christmas is one that we can take into each and every new year. God's gift has even more than a lifetime guarantee. It is eternal. His gift never wears out, it never goes out of fashion, and it never needs new batteries. And we never grow out of it. It always fits us absolutely perfectly. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship 
Thank you, Noriko and Neil, for leading us in that beautiful song, 10,000 Reasons. It's another good way of preparing for New Year. The poem that we heard has a message for me of don't fear tomorrow. God is already there. Emmanuel, God with us. And our song reminds me that God's heart is kind. It's rich in love. It's slow to anger in all the frustrations that I give to God. I truly have 10,000 reasons for my heart to find a reason to bless his holy name. And one particular line 
comes to mind in that song. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. That's a line I certainly need to take into the coming year and one to remind myself of each night. Have I said thank you for all the blessings God has given to me. So we've had a poem. The other thing that's helped me prepare for the coming year is a photograph. And here it is. It's a photo of the launch of Cromer Lifeboat. It's entitled To the Rescue. And it was taken by Stephen Duncombe and won a category award in this year's Shipwrecked Mariners Society annual photographic competition. Do have a look on the internet for the Shipwreck Mariners Photographic Competition 2020. You see some stunning pictures, and this one is an especial favourite of mine. And I invite you to look at it very closely as Jane reads a passage from Mark's Gospel, Chapter 4. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why were you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? I wonder what you thought when you were looking carefully at that photograph of the lifeboat launch. I don't know if you followed any of the BBC Two programmes, Saving Lives at Sea. Again, it's worth watching and catch up TV. The way that men and women put their lives on the line. No call for help ever goes unanswered. They're always there, always ready to turn out, no matter how dangerous it is, putting other people's lives before their own safety. The work of the RNLI is truly amazing. And there's an activity pack that we're including in the follow-up to this service. So you might like to look at some of those activities, especially the younger people. But back to our reading. Mark's account of the storm on Galilee. The Lake of Galilee is, the Galilee is notorious for violent storms and squalls. They can hit the lake without any notice, seemingly on a quiet, still day. A st squall can hit the lake. The reason is, this to, to the northeast and the east of Galilee, there's some deep ravines and the atmospheric pressure changes right up on the heights of Huron and Mount Hermon and the cold wind funnels down and strengthened as it hurtles through the ravine and then strikes the lake. It's worth reminding ourselves that some people in the boat with Jesus were fishermen. They knew Galilee well. They knew the dangers. And when they were frightened, they had good reason to be. There was no lifeboat rescue for them. They were terrified. Where was Jesus? Asleep in the stern of the boat. I sometimes wonder... What happens in the storms of our lives? Do we think that God's not involved? Sound asleep, uncaring, not connected with our world, and our fear is not unrealistic. We've got the experience of knowing that we're in danger. What happens? You really feel for the disciples when they woke Jesus up, and they must have been quite blunt with him. Don't you care that we're drowning, Jesus? And Jesus stands up in the boat 
and commands the storm to be quiet. It's interesting the phrase that he uses, he used earlier in Mark's Gospel when he healed a man suffering from demonic activity. Quiet, stop your raging. Jesus' authority calmed the storm. And we have frightening experiences in life. We've perhaps had them in the last year, and for some with uncertainty of the future, for security, well-being, feel very frightened about 2021. But Jesus is there. He's always with us. And when we cry out, then he will answer. Not always in the way that we want or expect, but he will answer us. For the message of Christmas is Emmanuel, God with us. And he most certainly is. So God is already there waiting for me in 2021, if I but look and realise it. He's there to keep me safe. His power can stop the raging around me and especially within me. Do not be afraid. God is with us. And I always think that courage is fear that has said its prayers. Courage is fear that has said its prayers. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this new year. We confess our need of your presence and your guidance as we face the future. Please forgive us for the times we have turned away from you and gone our own way. Father, we thank you that we live you in a country with an infrastructure designed to keep us safe. We thank you for all those who work for our benefit, our key workers, our military personnel, our NHS, our emergency services. Lord, God, please bless them and renew their strength. Your word reminds us in Psalm 33 that blessed is the nation whose God is Lord. We pray for our nation and its leaders during these difficult times and for all those who are seeking to bring peace and justice to our dangerous and troubled world. Bring our divided world together, Lord, and give us a greater vision of what you would have us to be. And during our daily preoccupations, open our eyes to the sorrows and injustices of our hurting world. Help us to respond with compassion and sacrifice to those who are friendless and in need. Lord, guard our hearts and minds in you today as we meditate on your words and truth. Jesus said, do not worry about your life. Father, we know that you are all powerful, that you are sovereign and that nothing is too difficult for you. Yet we still struggle with worry and fear, still carrying the same burdens left over from yesterday. Please lift all these things that are weighing us down right off our shoulders and give us the peace that only you can provide. Psalm 119 says, Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees. In the middle of life's uncertainties, in the days ahead, assure us of the certainty of your unchanging love. In the middle of life's inevitable disappointments and heartaches, help us, Lord, to turn to you for the stability and comfort we need. We each have our hopes and expectations for the year that is ahead of us, but you, Lord, alone know 
what it holds for us and only you can give us the strength and the wisdom we ne will need to meet its challenges. Therefore, Lord, help us to put our hands into your hand and to trust you and to seek your will for our lives during this coming year. And so, our Father, we thank you for the promise and hope of this new year and keeping our focus on you, the foundation and centre of our lives, we look forward to it. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who came to earth as a humble baby. He lived among us. He was without sin, and yet he died for our sins, so that through his death and resurrection, we would have everlasting life. Amen. Thank you to all my many friends who have made this service possible and for the services that you've prepared and produced throughout 2020. Thank you so much. And as we look forward to 2021, so we can look forward to working together to share the good news of God's love, God's hope, God's peace and God's joy that can be present with us right throughout 2021. So thank you. And as we close our service for today, a prayer for our world, to a troubled world, peace from Christ, to a searching world, love from Christ, to a waiting world, hope from Christ. And a prayer for each of us. May the Lord make my new year a happy one, not by shielding me from sorrow and pain, but by strengthening me to bear it if it comes. Not by making my path easy, but by making me sturdy enough to tread any path. Not by taking hardship from me, but by taking all cowardice and fear from my heart as I meet hardships. Not by granting me unbroken sunshine, but by keeping my face bright even in the shadows. Not by making li my life always pleasant, but by showing me where humanity and God's will need me most and by making me zealous to be there and to serve. May God grant me a happy new year. And so for us all, our loved ones near and far, may the God the Father keep you in all your days. May God the Son shield you in all your ways. May God the Spirit bring you healing and peace. May God the Holy Trinity drive all darkness from you and pour upon you blessing and light. God bless you all. Amen. <laughs>